Hi everyone and welcome to this video song frontier video now <clears throat> today i thought i would do a wee tutorial video um one of my friends is um basically having trouble with his pcmcia slots so basically i thought i would show you how to install windows 95 to a laptop in such a way that the pc card slots should actually work and this will actually serve as some sort of beneficial video for anyone who is kind of struggling to install Windows 95. Now if you do hear any music in the background, um, I don't own the copyright to it. I am currently listening to Chris Rogers on Rockin' Waves. Um, talking of which, I'm going to be starting there next, uh, I think, uh, sometime next week. So yeah, look out for me. Uh, it should be quite a good... Um, should be quite a good show. Um, okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> so basically, I'm loaded up into DOS mode. But what you can do, you can generally either boot from a floppy disk, um, or if you're using the Compact Armada 7750 MT like I am, and you can only choose between a CD-ROM and the floppy drive, Probably might want to find a Windows 98 boot disk and boot from that. Of course, there are also many, many ways of getting your computer in a state where you can boot to Windows 95 setup. Now, okay, I found a Windows 95 CD. Now, what I'm going to do is, before I do anything... I need to format the hard disk. So what I'm going to do is type format C colon slash hang on going to format C slash Q and then I'm going to put slash S. And what that will do, that will copy the system files needed to boot to a basic command prompt to the hard disk. So away it goes. I'm going to name the hard disk Compact. And as you can see, there's only command.com on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the CD-ROM drive. As you can see, the Windows 95 CD is there. Now, I could just go and install Windows 95 as it is. But, <clears throat> what I'm going to do instead is copy the files over to the hard disk. So, usually when an, o when an original equipment manufacturer is copying files to... Well, when an original equipment manufacturer copies files to a hard disk, the Windows install files, um, what they usually do is copy it to Windows slash options slash cabs as you can see I made the directory by typing md there md windows and then md windows slash options md windows slash options slash cabs so now I'm going to go to that directory by typing cd windows slash options slash cabs and then what I'm going to do is I want to copy everything from the Windows 95 installation directory into this folder. Now this isn't required, but I usually find that I get better results when I install Windows this way. And to be honest, it's only recommended if you've got a big enough hard disk. Now this machine's got a 2GB disk. 
So it should be okay. There we go. That's everything copied. Now again, I could start set up right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to reboot the computer, therefore it will be clean, it will be, you know, it will set up, won't try to look for files which no longer exist. So, to do this, it's time for Control alt delete which I pressed. Um, now the machine is counting up the RAM, in a very IBM-esque kind of a way. And as you can see, the machine is booting. It still says starting Windows 95. Oh, hang on a minute. That's because it's booting off the CD-ROM. That would do it. This is a special... This is a homemade Windows 95 CD-ROM, which actually has a bootloader slip streamed in. Quite clever, actually. Um, but as you can see now, I've, I've uh, reset the machine, and it still says starting Windows 95. But now it just spits you out to normal command prompt. And if we do DIR, we'll see that there's command.com as well as a Windows directory. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to CD Windows slash options slash cabs. Now beware that if you're using a British keyboard layout like I am, then your slash key, your backslash key will instead, well, it probably won't work in some cases. So if you want a backslash, what you need to press is the hash key. So, yes, it's it's quite an odd key mapping that way. But okay, we're in the camps file, and how do I know all the files are here? Once again, I'm going to go DIR, I'm going to type slash W, so we actually see all the files, instead of the files plus attributes. So, now we want to set it up. Now, don't be scared here, we are going to have an error message because hymem.sys is not loaded. Um, and it's saying, could not run scandisk, you should quit setup and run scandisk.exe slash all from setup disk one or the Windows CD in the Windows 95 directory. Then run setup again. Well, I'm just going to go and press escape, which you can do as well, and that will start setup. Now you'll notice that everything is just on a wee screen here. Now on a Compact Armada, if you want to make it fill out the screen, what you do is you press and hold the FN key, which is the bottom left of the keyboard, and press the T button. And as you can see there, it's panel fitting quite nicely. And yes, I know it's quite old, but to be honest, we're not seeing that much uh, distortion of text. This machine is brilliant for DOS games, as I have told you in earlier videos. In fact, over Christmas, I did take it to Penumbra, and I was playing Rayman on it, and it was going really quite well. So here I'm clicking continue. I just basically decided to reinstall Windows for your benefit, because I like doing this sort of thing. To be honest, I've had a bit of a crappy weekend, as per usual, so basically, you know, this, this is what I like to do, to kind of try and alleviate you know, any depressive symptoms. Right. <clears throat> um, accept the license agreement, unless you really do feel that you cannot abide by it and not copy Windows 95. Um, and apparently you can return it to the manufacturer for a complete refund. I don't think so. <laughs> now this bit, if you've got the CD-ROM drive installed in your Armada, this part could take a while while it's searching for a floppy drive that just isn't there. But don't worry, Windows will start up. There you go. Welcome to the Windows 95 Setup Wizard, which will guide you through the rest of Setup. To begin, click Next. Okay, now you'll see here that Windows wants to install in C column backslash Windows dot triple zero. And the reason it wants to do that is because this is acting as a clean install and it thinks that the Windows directory already contains a version of Windows, 
Well, actually, it doesn't. It just contains some files. The fact that the directory is there has triggered this. However, you can install Windows 95 into C colon backslash Windows. It's quite easy to do. All you need to do is go to Other Directory, click on the Next button, and then delete the dot triple zero from the folder name. Now, we're ready to continue. It's now going to warn me that the directory C windows already exists. If I continue, files in this directory may be overwritten. Do you want to continue with the specified directory? Why, yes, thank you for asking. So now, Windows is checking for installed components, checking everything's okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go for a custom install because, well, I kind of just like to do that. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to put my product key in, so no peeking. Okay, so now I'm ready to put my name and my company. In. And now, click next or press enter. Analyzing your computer. Do you wish for Windows to analyze it? Yes, I do. I let it search for the CD drive, but in this case, I'm not going to let it search for the sound card as well. To be honest, this likes to kind of play silly games when you do that. So, yeah. And while you're doing this, make sure you have all the drivers to hand. Now, if you're running a compact computer, good news! Because HP still has all the old compact drivers. So, well done HP for doing that for us. You know, the one thing that you have done. It's even more decent of them to do such a thing, knowing that Compaq as a brand has now been wound up. So I really do appreciate HP keeping all the Compaq drivers. Because uh, NEC and Acer didn't bother to keep any Packard Bell ones. Now this will take some time, and if it does crash, don't press Control alt delete Physically restart the computer. Oh, and apparently, um, at the time of filming, 20th of January 2013, um, 919... Uh, General Me uh, Greenwich Mean Time, or 4.19 Eastern Standard Time in the USA, uh, the Atlanta Falcons seem to be trampling the 49ers. I don't know who the 49ers are, I completely forgot, but I know the Atlanta Falcons are Atlan well, the Atlanta. And uh, Chris Rogers seems to like that because he's from Georgia. Right, okay, so now we're going to select components to install. So I'm going to go for the usual everything. There we go. I'm going to click next. Now it's going to want to install a dial-up adapter. I'm going to let it, but what I'm not going to let it do is install stuff for network, netware networks, because I just don't need it. However, TCP IP is definitely on the card. I'm doing this just in case I want to attach a network interface at a later date. Brilliant. Okay. So now I'm going to click next again. Um, I'm going to name the computer Armada slash dash 7750MT work group. The work group should be the same on all of your networked computers. And computer description, you can either put one in or the meta as you see fit. Okay, so um, this seems to have found uh, some sort of a video card. I don't, I can't remember for the life of me if it, this is the right one, but we'll go with it just in case it is. And um, then what we're going to do is I'm going to select the British keyboard layout because that's what I'm using here. 
Um, standard PS2 part mouse. And then regional settings shall also be set to British. User interface, Windows 95. Do I want to create a startup disk? Well, at this point, no, because I'm still using, still have the CD-ROM drive. So I'm going to click next, next again, and then the file copying shall begin. Now, at this point, I would advise you to go and make yourself a wee cup of tea, and this is what I plan on doing right now. So, thanks to the magic of um, thanks to the magic of video editing, I will be back instantly. Wow, it's such a good job I actually uh, took my own advice. Here is a nice cup of tea. It's been made in uh, my favourite mug. I bought this, I believe, in Inverness. <clears throat> right, okay. So, here we are. We're at the end stage of Windows 95, well, we're at the uh, stage of Windows 95 setup where the computer needs to restart. Um, now, one of my favourite descriptions in this was um, to actually get it to... <laughs> I once borrowed a copy of Windows 95 for busy people from my local library and it detailed how to install Windows 95 and it was quite funny. What it said was, click finish like so, and your text will change from English to Finnish. Just kidding on, it said. <laughs> I did find that quite funny in the book. And, uh, yeah, I don't, know why I'm inter I don't know why I'm so interested in this Atlanta Falcons game. I really don't, because I have no real interest in sport anyway. But apparently it's 24 to 14, so the uh, 49ers are coming back, it would seem. And... Um, Apparently, President Obama gets inaug inaugurated tomorrow. Quite excited. Well, quite exciting. Not excited. Uh, I wish we, I wish uh, the UK had a liberal government. Proper liberal, not conservative. Now, Windows ninety five. When it's installing. You will see, please wait while Windows updates your configuration files. This may take a few minutes. Don't worry about that. Uh, that is perfectly normal. This appears when you've installed a new program. I love that screen. Please wait while Windows 95... Please wait. Getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. It's always quite exciting when that happens. I remember I used to love that image in school. Here we go. So now, <clears throat> Windows asks you if you want to log in. Now, you can put a password in here if you want. There's nothing stopping you doing that. However, I just want to log in normally. Now Windows will ask you to confirm the password that you choose. I'm not going for a password, so yeah, that's basically what I've done. I've just turned it away. Um, so basically, whenever Windows starts, it will no longer ask for a password prompt, unless I choose to actually set one, which you can do at a later stage. Now, the reason I wanted to copy the Windows 95 files over is because of this. Windows 95 Setup likes to copy files from the CD in the second stage of setup. But here's the kicker. No CD-ROM device drivers are enabled. 
So, obviously, this is not going to happen. This was ironed out in Windows 98 and ME setup, so that's okay. But still, you know, pretty funny design. Okay, so now Windows is setting up the start menu shortcut. <clears throat> and the control panel. I don't know why uh, the don't know why this has decided to go sooner. I really don't. What I like about Windows ninety five is if you open up the program manager, it's actually populated. Whereas in Windows ninety eight you have to populate it yourself. And um word to the wise, if you actually double click on a GRP file, as in a program group, in Windows, it will actually add it to the start menu, the contents of that program group. So that makes it quite useful when installing 16-bit Windows 3.1 applications, because <clears throat> Windows 95 knows that to, well, the in invocation of a program group creation will actually just become a start menu folder creation instead. Okay, so it finished. And now we come to the final part, part of setup. First, I've got to select a time zone. Now, in Windows 95 RTM, you could actually select it from the map. But due to some uh, conflicts with uh, different nations and what have you, uh, you know, in time zone changes, when Microsoft actually disabled this, so you actually had to select it instead from the drop-down menu. Greenwich Mean Time. Apply. Check the date and time. Yep. As I suspected, it's incorrect because the CMOS battery on this machine is 9. So, can set the time here. 20, oh, 21, 36. And then I'll press enter. Nope. Click apply and then OK. That's reset the time and the time zone. Now, if you wanted to set up Windows Exchange messaging at this point, you could quite easily do that. This is what what I like about Windows 95 setup, the fact that you can actually do the, you know, set everything up all before you even get into Windows 95 for the first time. And this is not the only thing that's allowed to be set up. You can even set your printer up. Now who, how's about that? However, I have no printer to set up here. And now Windows has finished configuring your system, you must restart your computer before the new settings will take effect. Click OK to restart your computer now. Well, let's do that. Now, on here, I have installed Windows 95B. Which, to be honest, is probably the best version of Windows 95 one can get. However, if you want that truly retro feel, you could always go for Windows 95A, or RTM. I did have Windows 90, well, the first ever version of Windows 95 I installed on the 2001 custom belt was uh, Windows 95A. Don't know why it resets the screen. Resets. Even. So Windows 95 is going to do a wee bit more hardware checking. Oh, I think this is happening because... Okay, and now we're here. 
Welcome to Windows 95. So when I click OK, this is Windows 95 fully installed. However, the drivers still need installed. And also, time to set up the PC card slots. So what I'm going to do is going to go to Device Manager and here you can see they've been disabled. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on them. Disable device, no, and then the welcome to the PC card PCMCIA wizard will come up. I'm going to answer no to this because it's um, saying, am I connected to a SCSI card to install Windows? Nope. Do I want to review the system files and select rail mode PC card drivers so Windows can disable them? No, because this is a clean install, and now I'm going to go to finish. Now when you go to restart your computer, an odd thing happens. Windows doesn't actually restart it, it powers the machine down. And I think its reasoning is so that you can actually install the PC card controller. Well, this is a laptop, it came with one pre-installed. So all I need to do is... Power on the computer. So much like an IBM. So, we're back in Windows 95, what I'm going to do is you can now see that um, Texas Instruments Card Bus Controller has been installed. There are a couple of unknown devices, but these will be installed once I get around to installing the drivers. But for now, this is Windows 95. It has been installed on the Compaq Armada 7750MT and what I'm going to need to do is go ahead and install some drivers and some programs. But for now, this is the end of my video. I hope you liked <coughs> watching it. Um, if you did, please subscribe and look out for more videos which are coming soon. And thank you for watching this and please recommend this channel. Thank you very much.